to say the least, as probably a lot of you were. Um, I don't think we played as well as we were capable of playing on offense and uh, in some special teams categories. I thought our defense played extremely well. Um, and uh, our whole team gave great effort. Uh, we had a great turnout of fans, about 35,000 here in the stadium. And from what I understand, I, I probably should have asked you this, Bob, but I think we had thousands of teachers here. I know that that was an emphasis uh, uh, for the school districts, and, and that, that went over, that promotion went over really well. This whole area actually here, the bowl was jumping. It was a lot of fun. And so the um, <clears throat> crowd did their part, and uh, um, we didn't do our part. Not saying that SMU is not a good team, because they, they, they are a good team, and they'll win some more games, and, and they certainly beat us fair and square. It was a well-fought, clean-fought game. Uh, we only had two penalties. Um, and I thought... Uh, Coach Jones showed some class by not trying to run up the score uh, at the end of the game. <clears throat> um, just ran the ball up the middle. They probably could have thrown a play action pass the way we were trying to stop the run there. And uh, so he just, he, he, he won the game with class and he beat us fair and square. And, and um, I was particularly disappointed with the offense. And uh, we were just doing, some, we just, did, didn't do the little things right in key situations. Uh, and then you look at the tape, and it's never as bad as it seems. It's never as good as it seems. But, God, we had some opportunities offensively that we just didn't click on. And um, <clears throat> we need to do that. We need to get more explosive plays, zero explosive plays we had. Well, and when we did do something good, then we did. You only got one or two penalties the whole game, and one was on the was on the, uh, the deep pass. Carson hit uh, Patterson down the sidelines, and it was holding right out there, right in the middle. But it was holding, and and they called it. So um, the thing that's good about playing so quickly now is we get to go on another trip which is great because I'm, I'm collecting mileage points and uh, and Coach Stull and I are going to combine them and get covers for our barbecues, our outdoor barbecues with, from the airlines and then uh, maybe one of those neat hanging bags, you know, like that. So our mileage is, is really, we've been in four different cities in 20 days and now we'll be in a different one. So um, just a a very unique schedule. <clears throat> if we were winning, it would be lots of fun to go and travel and do all this. But with the game being this Thursday, boy, it's unbelievable how quickly we can we put away the SMU game. So um, let's go ahead and drag it through the mud just a couple more seconds with some of your questions. <laughs> Well, I think you'll probably see more of that, um, more of that two tight end type offense that we ran in the in the beginning of the third quarter, um, and because it, that's the kind of offense really you can run any place. You can be backed up and run that offense, you know, on your, your own five yard line and run uh, that set, and and um, it's we're integrating it into our offense more and more and we should have we should have been doing it and we should have done this and we should have done that and that's one of the should have and could have that we um, were looking at uh, correcting but well we're looking at um, we're looking at all those things our play selection is, um, um, we work on that during the week and write up what we're going to call based on com the computer and based on 
all the game plans and all the, so we get all the tapes on everybody. So we're, there's not a situation where we don't have a play ready to call. So it's not, you don't just think up plays and call them. So, uh, you know, if it's third and one, we know what we're going to call. We have a couple of play selections. Three percent of the third downs are third and three. That's a national average. Third and one, third and two, or third and three. And so we have three percent of our play calls will be in that area. And so we have, you know, two plays, two pass plays, two run plays for that area. The third and four, third to seven, we have certain plays we call. Uh, third and eight, and third and twelve, we have certain places, and, and then after that, another. Uh, so we mostly just go off the, the chart that all five of us sit in that room every day for hours to come up with the plays that we want to call, and then we just, it's just simply reading them off the, the chart. Now, obviously, while we're doing that, we're tracking how those plays are working. Now, if they're working well, then we identify that to each other and make sure that the last time we ran the play, we didn't get any yardage, but so-and-so fell down. If he hadn't have fallen down, his guy wouldn't have made the tackle. We should go back to that play because it's really there. And then we, at halftime, then we come together and say, you know, and we script the first 10 plays. At halftime, we come together and then we say, okay, here's the plays that we're working for the first half. Here's their that we think their adjustments are or or aren't, and then we construct our reconstruct our game plan for the second half. So it's pretty much uh, play calling is is actually a little simpler than you think. Sometimes you'll just get a feeling. Uh, every play goes through my ears and my voice, and so uh, sometimes I'll come up with an idea or or two or something like that, or someone will say, "Hey, let's try this." But we don't call any plays that we don't practice and practice. We don't make any plays up during the game. But play calling, when, it's, when it works, you're a good play caller. When it doesn't work, you're a, not a good play caller. Really, that, go ahead. They didn't miss much then, did they? <laughs> Do I have a message for my fans? Well, just hang in there with us. Uh, uh, I have nothing but um, uh, goodwill toward our fans. I, I, I think we got great fans here. Um, really great fans. And... Uh, I didn't notice them leaving uh, at halftime. Um, I think our fans are incredible and and, uh, and always have. Best fans of any place I've ever been. So um, they pay their ticket and they want to leave early, that's up to them. But uh, we sure want to put a product on that will keep them coming back in the second half and staying till the fourth quarter and putting a product that will be competitive and where they'll want to stay and not leave. Um, Is the philosophy of quarterback still exactly the same? Lamb some for all but a couple series of the game. Is the philosophy of Lamison starting the game and then Carson playing some? It's we'll save we'll save that until Thursday night when we unleash our new plan against Tulsa but not really I mean it's good it's it it's going to stay similar but we have some changes that we're going to make uh, hard to make them when you only have a couple days to practice but we are going to make some changes and I think that we need to just keep that amongst ourselves no I I, did, I hope I didn't say that. I, I hope I said offense sucks. Right, you did. Yeah. You did. Okay. And, and you also said all those guys over there, all over there, the best of you, we're not doing it. What did you tell your players when you headed back to the third? Well, we, um, 
that's pretty much what I told them, I guess, at halftime, you know, that uh, we're not playing up to our ability on offense with some t colorful adjectives, but we're not playing up to our ability on offense. We're better than this. You guys know that. These guys, SMU is not over there saying, hey, they're going to come back now. They're about ready to give up. That's what they were saying. And I don't think they had the in fire and the, in the uh, determination and the enthusiasm and the energy that we had coming out for the third quarter as they did at the beginning of the game. I really don't. And I, and I thought the plan that we put together was good, like I talked to you guys about going with, with, the, the, with the, the tight ends. It worked. We drove down the field and got that darn field goal blocked. And that kind of blew the air out of it for a little bit. But, um, what do you do to try and regain any of that, that lost you about the confidence? Well, we did. You know, we came back and drove, had another good drive together and put it together and then faked the field goal, which I was not going to kick a field goal. Now, the fake at the very last minute or seconds they had a TV timeout. We went out, we went to rush on the field, kicked the field goal, boom. We rushed on the field, they had a TV timeout. That gave them time to look around and discover in their coaches, to discover that Carson was in the game rather than Ian at holding. Carson holds for Dakota, but he hasn't held for a month, you know. So um, they identified that Carson was in as a new holder and that it might be a fake. At, when I heard that, I ran down and I didn't get to the official in time to call a timeout. But uh, we probably would have, if on fourth and seven, we probably would have dropped back and thrown the ball to the tight end on and out, which we did. And it was close to being, you know, hit him right here, and it was close to being complete. And Carson wasn't rushed. They didn't rush. The guy was open. He did throw it there, and uh, it would have been a first down, but he stepped on the line. Didn't, and the guy defended him, hit him, and kind of knocked the ball out. So what, it turned out it wasn't a bad play, but it um, didn't work. So it wasn't a good play. I, I thought Ma I th thought Mager played well. I thought Mager played one of his better games uh, this year, and um, um, and he's earning his. He certainly is earning his way, closing that gap between the two of the quarterbacks. I think, um, but I think this is a time right now where you, where you don't throw Nick under the bus, where you support him, support the offense, stick together, and um, and uh, support him and and encourage him and um, continue to help build his confidence and our offense's confidence. This isn't when we make the changes. Well, there's a lot of things Nick has to work on and he's working on them. That's one thing I like about Nick is he takes criticism really well and he's really coachable. And there's some techniques and things that he is doing that he did in the East Carolina game that he's changed and he did a better job of it in this game. Uh, so he's progressing, but uh, it's not uh, a simple thing. It's, it's, it's corrections, it's a couple bad habits, and he's continuing to work on those. But he's very coachable and will listen and will we'll do that. Yeah, I'm loyal to the whole team, but I don't think quarterbacks are really any different than anybody else. Uh, having played the position and coached the position and coached many quarterbacks in the past. Uh, uh, there's two people in the stadium you're going to get mad at, P fans are going to be upset with, the coach and the quarterback, and that's part of the deal. That is part of the deal. And I had a wonderful, wonderful president at Washington State, one of the finest men uh, that I've ever known. And um, he, I can remember him asking me this question. You know, you, th you think you're, you think you're staying too long with the quarterback, sticking with him, because we haven't won a couple games here, and he hasn't played real great. And I said, you know, I think I'm doing the right thing that you hired me to do, and, and the right thing is to stay stick with Drew Bledsoe. He's just a freshman. And he said, okay, I'll, I, I'll just shut up. I won't say anything again. So it's not, it's not unusual that I hear these comments. There was a pre-practice team meeting today. What were you talking about? 
Oh, uh, well, we, we give out over 20 awards for performance in games, win or, win or lost. And we think peer recognition is one of the, uh, a great form of motivation. And so we um, talk to the team about the past game, put it to bed, and, talk, and tell them what good things we did and what good players did and show them good plays. And then we usually do that uh, the day before we play. But since we gave them Sunday off, it was no special team meeting other than that. But just clear the clear the air, you know, clear the air, sweep the game behind you, re, award the, uh, recognize the people who played well. And there was a lot of people who played well in that game, on our team. I mean, golly, Shane Humes come in for Richard Spencer and played great. He was defensive uh, back of the week. He played 80 plays, and he's a freshman, and he's not playing like it. And um, Gage Sharps come in and played great on special teams. We moved from safety to linebacker and played really well. Josh Feely's playing great on defense. Jamar Reed played awesome. Bagley's playing awesome. Uh, Horace Miller had he only had one sack, but uh, he, he basically had two sacks. But he was, he, um, was only awarded one, but he played very very good and. And Drew Thomas is playing great. So there's a lot of good kids that are playing real good that we recognize. Sir, anything, last year the offense was so much better than this year, and there's so many people back on it, like eight stars back. Is there anything that, that's, that's just not working this year that's going to happen last year? Well, there's a lot of things that aren't working real good on offense. And uh, so it's just kind of take your pick. We're trying to correct as much as we can, as fast as we can. And... Um, and we'll continue to do that. But we're going to stay the course uh, with the people that we have. We're, gonna, we're not going to change our offense in the middle of the stream. Um, and um, you're each of you to your own opinion. But that's my opinion. Coach, will you be taking over calling plays on offense? Well, every play goes through me, Steve. So I... I'm, I I have the opportunity to nix or correct every single call. So I am the ultimate play caller when it comes to this, this team. And I don't, do not do that on defense. I let Andre Patterson call. But Aaron is sitting in the press box, and he knows this offense as well as, as I do. And, uh, and Brian Natkin and uh, Chad Raymond our tight end coach are sitting. That's what I hired Chad Raymond for because he's been doing it for me for three years as a graduate assistant. So they and we have the same chart. And everyone's reading the same thing. So it's there's no there's no surprises on what we do that. And again, if you call plays and they work, then you're a good play caller. If you call plays and they don't work, then you're a bad play caller. Right now, you could call us bad play callers, but that play goes through me. No. It's not predictable. It's a matter of execution. It's a matter of execution, but it's not predictable. Because we, we chart everything. Like I told you last week, when we put together that 98-yard drive, I thought we were predictable in running on first down. We ran on seven first downs in a row. That's predictable. But it worked. We went 98 yards and scored a touchdown. So... We were predictable, but I mean, June Jones and his offense is one of the most predictable offenses you can you can do, you can look at. I was standing there yelling out the plays to our defense that they were running. But they do it good. They out execute you. Yes. It, um, everybody's looking for blame, and that's okay. I, I'm looking to correct. I'm looking for uh, to correct and to motivate our team and to get them back in the spirit that they started the season with. And we have a long season left, have a lot of games left, and there's a lot of games that we can win. And um, 
I'm not throwing anybody or anything under the bus. And so um, feel free to. That's your job. You can do whatever you want. You know, it's a free, free country. But um, I'm looking for corrections, and I'm, I won't hesitate to make a correction if I think that's, that's the right thing to do. No, we have time to discuss that at a later date. I'll just give you some examples of, of things that have happened to me in the past where, um, you know, if you don't stay the course and you don't stay one game at a time and stay in, your, in, in the moment, you can get caught up in those type of things. And I'm not going to allow myself to get caught up in those type of things. When I started out in coaching, um, Gosh, it was, uh, we're in the last year of our contract at Weber State, as an example. Um, we were 3-8 and eight the year before. My last year of a contract, we traveled by bus all the way to California to open the season with Long Beach State. Um, we got down in the first half of the goal line and didn't score twice. We had a brand new president brand new president of the university, came in the press box and said he wanted to know who was calling the plays on the goal line in the press box with the coaches. Of course, they said, that one. <laughs> see that old guy down there? <laughs> yeah, he's the one calling him. And uh, so we took the bus home. It was a 20-hour, 24-hour bus ride. And, I mean, the assistant coaches were writing out their resumes in the back, you know. If we had a copy machine, they'd be copying out their resumes, and everybody was getting ready to get fired. And, and uh, we won every game the rest of the season, got beat by Marshall in the playoffs. And all of a sudden, I got an extension. They made me the new athletic director and the head football coach and got an extension, so... It's happened before, it'll happen again in this profession. But I'm just going to keep in the moment. I don't know if that answers your question, Darren, but... What are you telling the players? What's the goal for the rest of the year? The goal for the rest of the year right now is to win this game. Take one game at a time. To stay healthy. To stay fresh. So that you can give your all to each game and each play and that therefore play with our best players who we think are our best players and keep them healthy and keep in and, and um, we have not la lost hope when you lose hope that's when you, things start going and we're staying very disciplined we're doing everything by the book we're not easing we're not easing off on any of our rules or regulations or anything like that so don't get out of line do it the way we ask you to do it and when we ask you to do it. Okay. Talking about the game coming up, what will be the biggest struggle for the Tulsa game? Well, they're really, really good. They're 5-1 and one and uh, only beat, uh, got beat by Iowa State, I think, is their only loss. Their quarterback is a transfer from Nebraska. He won four games as a starter at Nebraska, and he's won five games as a starter uh, at Tulsa. Uh, Cody Green is his name, 6'4", about 230, real, real good player. He may have bruised his shoulder in the last game against Marshall because he didn't throw for very many passes in the second half. I hope that you guys can, uh, investigative reporters, can go and try to find that out if he does have a sore, sore right shoulder. Can you help me out, Darren, investigate that? Okay, you try. Blankenship said he's fine. I didn't want to hear that. <laughs> they have a running back, Trey Watts, who electrified the crowd uh, uh, here last week. Golly, he's real good. J.C. Watts' son, he's a real good running back. Big, great big uh, kid, Singleton, or Singletary, that number eight, that's 265-pound uh, running back. They ran the ball 
straight ahead against Marshall because the quarterback did have a bruised shoulder, but they rushed for 265 yards against Marshall. Marshall had a chance to win at the very end of the game, uh, almost pulled it off. Uh, they've had close games with Marshall, close games with Fresno State, and uh, beat Fresno State by one point, I think, at home or two or three points. But they're a good quality team. Their defense is really solid. A lot of the guys that played last year against us uh, and uh, played uh, will be playing again. A lot of guys, seniors that are coming back. And they throttled us last year, embarrassed us at home last year, and rubbed our nose in it last year. So um, um, we're... We're going to do everything we can to, to prepare ourselves to stay fresh, get healthy, play our very best players, and play the best that we can and improve our offensive production. It's got to, it's got to start. We got to start making it pretty soon. Yeah, I like it. I like. The fact that we're playing sooner, I would have hated to have gone through this week, um, the whole week. This way, golly, as far as our players are concerned, you know, they don't even remember who we played. All they're thinking about is Tulsa. That's that coach. You, I've never seen you talk about coach more likes than you. Thank you, Darren. I came to the game Saturday thinking we'll win this one. We set up I know your wife's on my side. I, he's got 50% of that. <laughs> Well, I'm not thinking about next season. I'm thinking about right now, but sure I do. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to make sure and have a blast and enjoy what I'm doing. And this team is about as good a team and as good as character people as you can be around. And if, you, if all of you had the opportunity to know the team the way that I know them, that uh, you, you would want to spend um, a lot of years with, with these great kids. So... Um, I have that going for me that you don't know. You know, you don't know what what it's like to to coach with these guys and to be with these these young men, and uh, I do. And um, uh, none of you would want to leave. I'm guaranteeing none. None of you would would give up on these kids or want to leave. So it's a uh, it's it's a wonderful program. They're, I right now I would say yes. I would have said that. You know, he didn't play really. He wasn't spectacular against Marshall because he didn't throw. But he's he's he manages the game very well. Uh, he's um, and and I thought SMU quarterback managed the ball the game very well. Gilbert, he, uh, you know, uh, he um, did what he was supposed to do when he was supposed to do it. And Line, uh, Zach Line, their running back, ran the ball when he was supposed to run it. And we hit him as hard as we could. And they knew that they were in a game, but they won the game. They managed the game better than we did. Well, thanks, Steve. Do they root for you? They want to see you win. They want to see you turn this program around. But with Weaver State and Washington State compared to teams, what is it that Don here is about coaching here that makes it so difficult to try to win and win consistently? Well, um, I think this is a great place. I think this is a um, great fan base. Um, great football. The football here in El Paso is the best that it's ever been, high school football. Uh, we have availability to the best recruits in the entire country. Um, the weather's great as far as getting recruits in and out. Uh, the budget's good enough that we can get out and work, work recruiting. Um, I'm disappointed as anybody else that we... Um, didn't win more games over the the last few years, and um, but I don't think it's any more difficult than 
than those other jobs. I really don't. I, I mean, we have, I know I guess some fans left at halftime, but, um, and there might have been a few boo, boo birds out, out there, uh, but these fans are loyal. They're true blue. They're going to come next week. They're going to, the next time we're at home for homecoming is going to be a good game. They're going to have fun. Uh, we put on a great show. Um, and uh, we didn't put on necessarily a great offensive show for them this last game, but but um, this is a good place, and uh, and you and we you, you have athletes in all of our sports who conduct themselves responsibly, and um, once in a while may stray from what they're supposed to do, but for the most part. We make the sports, we make the paper, their names in there for the good stuff that we do on the sports. So. What Steve's trying to say is that we start looking at ourselves and wondering, you know, what, what are we doing wrong here? Well. So we start trying to look at this, will it ever happen? Sure, it will. It'll happen. It'll happen. I think the, uh, I think. M- one of the things is the, the conference realignments, the conference changes that we've had. We went into a progressive conference like Conference USA. Uh, I don't think the fans really, or the people, or myself really understood just what an East Carolina was like, or a Southern Miss was like, or a Central Florida was like. We knew what Utah was like, BYU was like, New Mexico was like, those teams, Fresno, Colorado State, we were familiar with those teams. I wasn't really familiar with what it really is like in East Carolina, and then you go back there and you go, whoa, these guys can play here too. And so those are some things I think that we um, didn't realize when we went into that conference, and now it's, you know, we're putting other teams in that that uh, that are probably just as good as those teams that are going to be leaving. So it's uh, that's changed a little bit. But I, I, this is a heck of a school and a heck of a community to live in. And I don't know. There's not one of the players on our team that doesn't think that. And you can go right over here to Ian Campbell's father, and, and he can tell you what Ian. He's from California, Southern California. And uh, he's at just about at every game he can be at, and his kid loves it here. And uh, in maybe the first six months he didn't, but he does now. Yeah, they would. Yeah, you're right. Sure you do. We deserve a winner here, and we support a winner. And and if we won, we'd have, you know, all the time we'd have fifty thousand people here. I really think that. And winning is part of it. And we've done. Bob has worked hard with the university to do the right things, uh, to try the right things to get back to the tailgating and the atmosphere that we want. We've got a young, aggressive uh, marketing staff that's working their tail off to sell tickets and do fun activities and trying some new things. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But um, no one's sitting on their ass around here just waiting for it to happen. We're working hard, and I am too. And um, as long as we do that, we have a chance. And I, and I think the fans will will support us and come back. And, and um, were they selling hot dogs cheaper outside at halftime or something? Is that why everybody was leaving in the third quarter? <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> what do I owe that to? Oh, you're good. Yeah, you're good.
thanks. Makes me feel good. Anybody else want to get anything off their chest here? <laughs> we got a long season to play. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks again for coming. And uh, Outback did a great job in lunch. So. <laughs>